Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for the Taverns of Tiefenthal. In this first video, I will be teaching how to play the game while we are actually playing it, and if you would like to watch the rest of the playthrough, you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description or the I in the top corner. Now, the reason this video is being made is because it won the poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of this channel, and you can learn more about that at patreon.com slash Games. At this point, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because if any mistakes are made during this playthrough, I can then put corrections on the screen and you should be able to see them. Now, what's going on in the Taverns of Tiefenthal is each player is in charge of running their own tavern, and as they play throughout the game, they will end up getting more and more guests and service personnel who will get added into a deck, and you will deal them out every single night as you fill up the tavern, and then you charge your customers for doubloons, and then you get more customers by tempting them with the best beer that you can make. Now, I will explain all of these details while we are actually playing it, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. And also, if you would like to directly support this channel and the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you will find a variety of ways with which you can support the channel, and there are some pretty cool perks as well. Uh, some of those involve actually voting on the videos that I film each month, and this is one of those videos. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the Taverns of Tiefenthal fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before we move on, I do want to mention that this game can be played with up to five different modules, and for this playthrough, we are going to use three of them. Now, as you integrate these modules, you must use all of the ones before it, so since we want to use the third module, we must also use the second and the first. And the first module is simple, that's just the base game. The second module brings in entertainers that can entertain the various guests in our taverns, and we can pay those entertainers with a new resource called Schnapps. And the third module involves tracking the reputation of our taverns. We're going to do that right over here, and if we were not playing with that module, we would simply flip that part of our board over to look like this. Either way, we do want to track our reputation right here, and the last thing that I want to point out is the fact that these cubes do not actually come with the game. Uh, the way you can track your player color is this little banner here on the taverns. We can see red, green, and blue, but I'm going to put these right over here to make it a little bit easier in the video to see whose turn it is and what they're doing. Now, at this point, we can jump into the game, and we are going to be playing as the red player right up here. Now, in order to begin, let's focus on this track along the top of the monastery board. This is the evening tracker, and you'll notice there are eight different slots to it. These show the eight overall evenings we will be playing through, and once we finish up the eighth evening, we will then score up all of the points in our decks, as well as the points on our reputation tracks, and the person with the most points wins. Now, each one of these evenings consists of seven overall phases, and the first phase is very simple. All we do is we take the evening tracker, and we move it forward once. Now, whenever you move this tracker, if you crossed over any bonuses like this little schnapps here, then everybody takes that bonus, and everybody will then take the bonus that is listed underneath that evening marker. In this case, we can see that every player will gain one counter guest, and that bonus will also come in at the beginning of the fourth and seventh evenings of the game. Now, I have stacked all of the bonuses along the top here, so we can simply grab all three of these and give one of them to each player. So this guest will now enter our tavern and sit down here at the counter. And at certain points in the game, we are allowed to discard this as a one-time bonus action. Now you'll notice there are two different sides to this counter guest, and they have different actions on them, but we don't have to decide which of these we will choose until we actually discard that counter guest. So we can sit them down right over here. And then the same thing is going to happen over here for both of our opponents. We've now reached the second phase of the evening, where everybody's tavern will simultaneously fill up with their guests, as well as service personnel. Now, the way this works is we will all draw cards from the top of our deck at the same time, and then we will put them down into the correct spot in our tavern. Now, if you pull a uh, guest like this card right here, you have to put them down at an empty table. You can tell this because it is obviously a guest sitting at a table, and it's a red table because we are the red player, and this is one of our starting guests. They're effectively a regular of our tavern that we already have. So we can sit them down right over here, and then we can deal another card from the top of our deck, and we have found another regular. Now, in this case, this table is already full, so we can add this one right over here to this table, and it doesn't actually matter which table you go to. We could do that as well. There is no functional reason to have one in any one place or another, but either way, we can put this right here, and it's worth noting that everybody is going to keep dealing cards out of their decks until every one of their empty tables is filled. Once that happens, you have to stop drawing, so if we pull out another one of these regulars, 
Steelers, then that is going to be it. And we have actually found a waitress. Now, this is a, uh, a service personnel, essentially. And we can put the waitress right over here, and they are going to help us out this evening. And we can draw again. And this time, we have found a beer merchant. Uh, this is another one of those service personnel. And they're going to go right down over here and help us get some more beer for this evening. Uh, now, again, we are uh, hoping to not pull out another guest. And actually, this is great. So at the start of the game, every person has some of these regulars in their deck, and they have one waitress, one of these beer merchants, and an extra table. Now, we have drawn all three of them in our first turn, which I certainly like, and it's probably pretty obvious how this table works. We can just add it right over here, and now we have an extra empty table that we can uh, fill up with a guest, so we can effectively go deeper into our deck. So we can keep drawing here, and we found another one of the regulars, and then we have finally found the last regular. So we can add them here, filling up that table, and since all of our empty tables are now full, we must stop dealing. Now that our tavern is full up, we do have an option of using our counter guest. The option that is listed right here effectively allows us to refill up our tavern. Uh, the way this works is we can discard all of the cards that we just drew, uh, kicking everybody out, and then we can redraw cards. But again, we would only use this, uh, we only have the chance to use this once. And if we do that, then we don't have the option of using the backside. And I'll explain how that uh, bonus works pretty soon. Either way, I am very happy with how our tavern filled up on this first night. And of course, we can now see how our opponent's tavern's filled. We have now found ourselves at the third phase of the round, where all of our waitresses will simultaneously activate. Now, the way this works is we will each take one die for each waitress, up to a maximum of three, and then we can all roll them at the same time, and then we will get to use this die during the action round, which will happen a little bit later. When we look over at our opponents, we can see that the green player has no waitresses tonight, but the blue player does, so they will roll one die as well. At this point, let's now go into the fourth phase of the evening, which is the how can I serve you phase. Now, the way this works is everybody will start by simultaneously rolling all four of their white dice, and they will then put them on top of the coaster in their area. Once all of the white dice are rolled, we can then begin to draft these dice from the coasters that are in front of us and in turn order. Now, the starting player pawn is this large mug right here, and this means we are the starting player, which means we get to draft a die first, and then the green player will go. Now, our only options are this 1, this 3, this 4, and this 5 in front of us right now, and in order to figure out which one we should take, we need to know what those dice can do for us. Now, later on in this evening, we will use each of these dice to activate different parts of our tavern. The locations we can activate with dice are denoted by these gray squares, and some of those locations, like right here, have a question mark in the middle. That means any value of die can be put down onto this spot, and if we take a closer look at it, you'll see this little 1x there means you can only go here once. Now, the activation ability for this cash register is that die will give one doubloon to the player. Now, another option is spaces like this one right here. It has the five pips on it, which means you can only use the five value dice to activate the spot. But if you look at the green arrow, there are three little dots, which means you can put as many dice as you want towards this action, and then you get to evaluate the bonus once for each of the dice that are there. When we look out to the rest of our tavern, we can see down here, we can put one of any dime to get a beer. Over here, you can put ones or sixes as many times as you want, and every die that goes over here to the beer merchant is going to give one beer to the player, plus one for each of these merchant cards that are over to the side. That means every one and every six this round is going to get us two beer, so that is certainly better than one beer for a die. We can then look up here to the guests, and you'll notice that each one of them has a specific die value on them, and a doubloon amount that matches that die value. Now, this uh, goes through the entire game. If you ever have a guest later on that has maybe a requirement of a four die, then that uh, card will give you four doubloons. Now, at the start of the game, we just have the one value and two value ones, which give one doubloon and two doubloons, respectively. And when we look at all of these options, we can, first of all, tell that when it comes to fives, well, this is the only place that we can use them, besides, of course, the question marks. And if we look at all of the rolled dice, we have the only five currently available. Now, we do have a five over here with our waitress, but getting a couple fives is definitely a good thing. So I think for our first pick, let's go ahead and grab this five right here and add it down there. And now in turn order, we can see the green player gets to pick from these dice that are currently in front of them. After looking over their options, they're going to pick up one of these ones, and then the blue player can go, and they're going to grab this two. That's actually the only two out of all of the coasters here. Now, once every player has taken one die from these coasters, we then pass them clockwise. 
that means this one will come over to us and these will pass over here to our opponents, and then we will start once again. Uh, we obviously have the starting uh, player mug, which is why we begin, and we can now choose from this one, this three, and this six. Well, I think the main decision for us is do we want the one or the six? Both of those can be used down here to get two beer, but the ones could also instead be used up here to get one doubloon from these regulars. Uh, with that in mind, I figure we can take this one right here, and now green gets to pick. And it looks like they would like a 1, and the blue player also wants a 1. We've all taken a die again, and that means we can shift all of these down. And we once again get to pick, but this time from the 3 and the 4. Now if we look at the options out here on our board, we don't have anything that is specific to 3 or 4 just yet. We have a very uh, basic set of customers at this point, and we will have lots more options as we start to flesh that out. But uh, what this means is we don't really care between these two, and none of our opponents can really uh, care between those either. So let's just go ahead and take this 4 right here. Uh, the green player does care. They're going to grab this 6, and then the blue player, well, they're just going to take this 3 here. It's time for us to pass these coasters one last time, although obviously there is no decision to be made. We will get this four, green gets this three, and blue gets this three, and that is going to finish out this phase. So we can now start the fifth phase of the evening, where we plan out all of our actions by placing the dice onto various action spots in our tavern. Now it's important to note that these decisions are not binding. We can finish out a plan and then change things when we actually start evaluating these actions in the next phase. This is really here just to give us a good idea about what we want to do, and everybody can do this simultaneously. Now if we look at our die options, we can see that two of them don't match anything on our board that specifically need those pit values. So I figure we may as well put this one right over here. That is a question mark, so we can take any type of die, and we can put at most one die there, and that will get us one doubloon. And then this one can come down here, and that is going to give us one beer. Now, in the action phase, we are going to spend doubloons in order to get more service staff for our tavern, and we also have the potential of permanently upgrading our tavern by flipping over some of these pieces, as you can see right here. Now, I'll explain the specifics of that really soon, but it's also worth noting that beer is what we use to get more regulars into our deck, who will then sit down at our tables and hypothetically give us more options to get even more doubloons from some higher pit values than one and two. Now, at this point over here, we have two fives and a one, and I figure we may as well put both of these fives right over here on top of this monk, and I'll explain what this action does in just a minute. And lastly, we have this one right here. Now, we can use this one down here if we want to. Again, this uh, beer supplier can take a one or a six as many times as we want, or we could send this one right up to this uh, uh, guest, and that will get us one doubloon. Now, one thing to consider when we are making this decision uh, is the reputation track right down here. Now, the symbols on this track are victory points, and that's the amount of points you get at the end of the game if the token is on that specific spot. But as this token goes around and around this track, we will gain benefits like schnapps, as well as some extra uh, actions and noble cards that are worth 10 points each. And that is a big way you get points in this game is by evaluating those crown actions. Now, after we finish planning and before we take actions, we are going to look at our entire tavern and count up how much beer we are making and how many doubloons we are making, and the number of those two that is lower is going to be the amount of reputation that we gain. So at the moment, we can see we are making one doubloon and one beer. So those are tied, which means we uh, the lowest one is one, so we would go forward. And I suppose if we went up here and got a doubloon, then we would make two doubloons to one beer, and we would still get just one reputation. So uh, no matter what we do with this uh, die right here, it's not going to affect our reputation. And I figure let's send it right down here, because this way we get two beer for one die, as opposed to just one doubloon for that die. At this point, we have finished planning out all of our dice, but once again, we can change these decisions up when we start evaluating the dice if we want to. Now, as I said before, this phase happened simultaneously, so we can see the green player has now finished their planning, and blue has also finished. Unfortunately for them, they have one die that they are not actually allowed to use in their tavern, which is a bit of a bummer, but now that we have finished out the planning, it's time to go into the sixth phase of the evening, where it's finally time to serve our guests. Now, unlike the previous round, this one is going to happen in turn order, and it will begin with the player with the starting player mug and go clockwise around the table.
Now, the first thing that we have to do before we even take any actions is we have to evaluate the reputation. Now, again, you only use this when you are using the third module for the game. And like I explained just before, you will now look to your board and see how much beer you are making and how much doubloons you are making just with your die placements. And the number that is smaller is the amount of reputation that you will get. Now, we can see that we are currently planning on making one, two, three beer and just one doubloon. One is the lower value, which means we can move our reputation reputation marker over here. So uh, that is now two away from gaining a schnapps. And I'll explain uh, how schnapps works relatively soon here. And now we can start taking our actions. Now we have the ability to make some beer as well as some gold. And I figure let's go ahead and start off with the beer. Now, when we evaluate the dice, we pull them off of our board, and when it comes to counting out our beer and our doubloons, we just have to remember what we have. There are no tokens for this. So we can pull this one off, and again, for every die you pull from this area, you get one beer from the slot, and you get one beer from every one of these uh, beer merchants that are over to the side. That means that one is going to get us two beer. You can see the little plus right there. And then we can pull this four back, and that is going to get us a third beer overall. So we now have three beers that we can use. Well, with these three beers in hand, let's now come over here to the guest card row and entice a new guest into our deck. Now, if you'll notice in the top left of all of these cards right here, there is a beer value, and that is the amount of beer that you have to spend in order to take that card. Uh, now, at the moment, we have three, and unfortunately, that means we have to take one of these. That is the lowest value of all of these. If you only have two beer, you can't actually entice anyone with that. Now, the threes are a little bit special. You notice there is essentially a deck of those threes right here, so uh, there are always going to be threes available, at least until all of these are taken. The rest of these simply get refilled from the top of this deck, and the amount of beer that these cost is going to vary. We can see we've got some fives, a four, and a six. Now, you'll notice in the top right corner of these cards, there is a victory point amount, and that is the amount of points that that card will give you if it is inside your deck at the end of the game. Uh, now, inside your deck includes the cards that are in your discard pile or just anywhere within your overall tavern deck system, and obviously this will just get us one victory point, and if we had just one more beer, we could buy this four value one, which would get us two points. Now you'll notice that some of these cards have a symbol in the middle of it. These are bonuses that you get once when you actually pick up that card. So that means if we were to take this card here, it would immediately get us three more doubloons to play with on that turn, but this would give us no bonus in the future when we ended up playing that card in the future. Now, with all of this in mind, I figure we may as well go ahead and spend those three beer because once we have this card in our deck, we now have the ability to use three value dice when they are drafted, and they will get us three doubloons, which is certainly not bad. Now, before we move on, I do want to point out two quick things. The first is that within an evening, you are only allowed to entice one new guest. That means if we had nine beer available, we would not be able to pick up this five and this four. However, instead, we could use that nine beer to pick up a noble. Now, you can see this little chart right here says one noble costs nine beer. If we had 14 beer, that would get us two nobles, and 18 beer would get us three. Now, the nobles are in this stack right over here, and you'll notice that all of them have a 2 value down in the bottom, and more importantly, all of them have 10 victory points in the top right corner. So uh, this is a really big way to have a lot of points, even though the ability for that noble is not super powerful. So let's now come back to our tavern, and we have this newly enticed guest to add into our deck. Now, whenever you take a new card and you add it into your deck, you always put it face down on top of your deck, so you are very likely to draw it in the next evening, which is certainly something we like. Now, at this point, we've finished out those actions, but we still have a few more dice to use, and I figure let's now pull this four off of our cash register, and that is going to give us one doubloon. Now, with this one doubloon, we can do a few different things. The first thing that we can spend doubloons on is upgrading our tavern. Now, you'll notice there are these symbols with doubloon costs scattered all throughout our tavern. Uh, the cheapest one of these happens to be right over here, and you'll see this six on it. Well, that means we could spend six doubloons to upgrade our doubloon storage ability. At the start of the game, this track shows us how many doubloons we can hold from one turn to the next. So uh, if we wanted to, with this one doubloon, we could simply move this forward and keep that and then hypothetically use it on the next turn. If we were able to get up to six doubloons right now, we could spend all six of those and that would allow us to flip this over and we could now store um, uh, five of the doubloons from one round to the next. Now that is certainly nice, 
But on top of that ability, whenever you flip over any of the tiles within your tavern to upgrade them, you also gain a bonus of taking one noble and putting them on top of your deck. So it's effectively 10 victory points every time you upgrade any aspect to your tavern, which is a big reason why you want to get uh, doubloons. Now, not all of them increase storage. For instance, if we were able to get 12 doubloons together, we could use that to flip this over, and now it is a permanent waitress that we would have access access to every single night for the rest of the game. Now, you may notice that some of these have another much smaller number next to the cost. We can see this says minus four. Well, that has to do with a special discount that you can get when you flip over these tiles if you discard the applicable type of service worker. We can see that this does cost four doubloons to take normally, and what this minus four means is that we could discard one waitress in order to reduce the cost to upgrade this tile right here by four. We can do that multiple times, but you can only discard the applicable type of server, and you can only discard them if they came out within that uh, specific round. So if we wanted to, we could discard this, and instead of costing 12, that would just cost 8 doubloons in order to get a permanent waitress, which does sound great. However, we only have one doubloon to play with, so uh, obviously upgrading our tavern is something we want to get to, but it is not something that we have any ability to do on this turn. Fortunately for us, there is something else we can spend our doubloons on, and that is adding new service cards to our tavern deck. Now you'll notice the cost in doubloons is in the top left corner. There's a one, a two, a three, all the way up to a six over here. And there is an important restriction here. You cannot pick up more than one of each type within a given evening. That means we could pick up one of these and one of these, but we would not be able to pick up multiple waitresses as one example. Now you'll see that uh, some of the more expensive ones do have victory points in the top right corner, which is nice. Uh, but at the moment, we just have one doubloon. Now the only thing we can buy with one doubloon is a bard right over here. And it is worth noting that these bards are only in the game if you are playing with the third module or above. Now, I think we should go ahead and pick up this bard, because what happens with the bard is when they come out within a given evening, they allow us to bump our reputation track by one, and they obviously don't fill up a table, so they will not stop us from going deeper into our deck. So let's spend that one uh, doubloon, and we get to get ourselves a bard. And then just like every card we gain in the game, we will put this face down on top of our deck. At this point, we just have these two fives left over to activate, and I figure let's go ahead and do it. Now we can see over here the symbol shows a little disc as well as a white arrow going up. What this means is every five that we activate on this uh, permanent monk regular is going to move us up once on the monastery track. Let's come over here and we can see the monastery track is just underneath the evening track on this board. Now we all start out at the zero mark here, and you'll notice that when we go up one spot, there is no benefit, but when we go up twice, there is a bonus here. And this is the reason I decided to take that five, because I figured it made sense to try and get here within this turn. Now this bonus right here says that we can for free pick up a beer merchant. Now this is the beer merchant here. Normally it costs two doubloons, but we essentially get it for free. So we've effectively kind of made two extra doubloons this turn if you want to think about it that way. Now, whenever these beer merchants come out, they will give uh, us one beer each. Uh, they are not associated with any dice. So having these knocking around inside of our tavern deck is certainly a good thing. We can also look ahead at this monastery track and see that two more bumps would gain us the ability to take a free waitress, which normally costs four doubloons. And obviously having more waitresses is good because that means we get to roll more personal dice and do more actions. Farther on, we can get schnapps as well as more nobles, so moving along this monastery track is certainly something good to do. So let's add this beer merchant onto our deck, and at this point, we have finished out all of our actions, so we can now pass on, and the green player can now do their actions. As always, the first thing a player does is they count up the amount of doubloons and beer they're making to go up on their reputation. Right now we can see green is just making one doubloon, but down here they have three dice on their beer supplier, and each of those dice will give them two beer. So that is six beer that they are making and one doubloon. The lower of those two numbers is one, so they will get one reputation. And now it's no surprise to see them start off by doing their actions by pulling all three of these dice off of their beer supplier. Again, each die gets them one plus one beer, so that is six beer that they have. And with this, they are going to entice this new guest into their deck. We can see that's worth three points to them at the end of the game. If they put a four on it in the future, they will get four doubloons. And as a bonus, when they take this card, they immediately get three doubloons to play with right now. 
Now, as soon as a card is taken from this row, you immediately refill it with a new one from the top of the deck. But again, remember, you can only pick up at max one of these guests per evening. So the green player now has three doubloons that they can use, and they can pull this die off of their register to get a fourth doubloon. They'll now come over here, and they've decided to spend all four of those doubloons by picking up one bard and one dishwasher. Now, the dishwashers are worth one point at the end of the game, and for every dishwasher you pull out within a given evening, you can modify one of your placed dice by adding one pip to it. Now, you are allowed to use multiple dishwashers on a single die if you want to, and obviously having these dishwashers around will increase the flexibility of the player as they are trying to get the right dice to activate the best positions within their tavern. So green can add these on top of their deck, and now they're done with their actions which means blue can now take their actions, and they of course start by taking reputation. We can see they're making one beer and one, two, three, four doubloons. Now one is obviously the lowest value there, so they're just gonna get one reputation. And as you can see, there was unfortunately no place for them to put this three down. Uh, the draft did not work out particularly well in their favor. They really wish they could have uh, used this, but the die that they rolled with their waitress did not really help them out this round. Now they can start taking their actions, and the first thing they will do is just get one beer. And as I mentioned before, you can't do anything with less than three beer, so they're just going to store that one beer by pushing this token right over there, and they can then use that next turn in, um, in conjunction with extra beer that they make to try and get a better card. Now they can pull off this die, which is going to get them one doubloon. This will get them another one, and then this will get them two, so they have four doubloons to play with. And with them, they have decided to pick up another waitress. The waitress die did not help them out too much this turn, but they are confident that rolling extra dice over their opponents is going to be good for them in the long run. So they can add this on top of their deck, and that is going to finish out their action round. Which means we have now reached the seventh and final phase of the evening, which is closing time. Now this one is really simple. All we have to do is take all of the cards that we drew at the beginning of this round, and we can put them into our discard pile. And that includes, obviously, all of our service staff and any extra tables. All right, it's now time to start a new evening in the tavern. And the way we do this is by moving the evening marker over to the next slot. Now, as I mentioned before, whenever you cross over a bonus like this, everyone will get that bonus. So each person is going to gain one of these schnapps uh, resources here. And then once we land on the spot, you'll see that each person is able to pick up one of this type of performer. Now, obviously, there are three of these, one per player. And whenever you take this entertainer, you have to decide which side you would like to use. And then you put them into your tavern and they stay that way for the rest of the game. Now, each one of these entertainers gives you a different ability for uh, feeding them schnapps, essentially. We can see this side of this performer is going to give one, uh, two doubloons for every schnapps that you use. Now, it is worth noting that every schnapps that you have at the end of the game is worth one point, and at the end of your turn, you're never allowed to hold more than four schnapps. So obviously, uh, hoarding some schnapps and spending a bunch of them to get a bunch of doubloons does seem pretty good, but the opposite side says we could spend two schnapps as many times as we want to to pick up three beer each. So this musician entertainer is going to enter our tavern and kind of set up shop, and we do have to pick which side to go with, and getting a bunch of beer is good because you can get powerful, uh, high victory point uh, new guests into your deck, but I think we should go with this one. Uh, getting doubloons is good because that allows us to permanently upgrade our tavern as well as get more service staff, and more importantly, this costs just one schnapps, whereas this one costs two. We have one schnapps at the moment, and we can get a second one by getting two more reputation, but that is not necessarily guaranteed. Uh, we do have a bard coming up, but either way, I think getting doubloons is going to be good for us. So that musician is going to get uh, installed right over there. Uh, they will stay on this side for the rest of the game, and now we have a new way to get lots of doubloons. Well, of course, as long as we can source some schnapps in order to give it to the musician. Of course, while we were making that decision, both of our opponents were doing the same, and it appears the green player also wants the doubloon side, but the blue player, they want the beer side right there. Oops, I just realized that as part of the final phase in the first evening, we do have to pass this starting player pawn clockwise around the table. That means the green player should have this right now, and with that, we have now come to the end of the tutorial phase of this video. If you would like to watch the rest of this playthrough all the way to the end, including final scores, then feel free to click the I in the top right corner. There is also a link to the second video down below in the description, and if not, then uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed learning how to play. 
As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.